readers and happy Friday. Welcome back for another read aloud. It's read aloud number 28 and it's another Friday classic. Today's choice is the Bingity Bangity School Bus written in 1950. This book was a favorite from my childhood and yup it was another one that Marna and Poppy used to shorten all the words. I hope you like the adventures of the bingity bangity school bus. I think I just like saying the word and the alliteration. Join me as I read the bingity bangity school bus. The bingity bangity school bus. Story by Floor Conklin. Pictures by Ruth Wood. With a bingity bang like a thousand tin cans, Busby, the old school bus, came rattling down the road. He rolled over the hill to the schoolhouse, and Joe, the driver, braked him to a screeching stop. At the school crossing, the policeman held up his hand and stopped all traffic. The children climbed out of the bus and hurried into school. That old bus sounds as if he's falling apart, the policeman called to Joe. Busby's ready for the junkyard, Joe agreed, but this town will never fix him up until people find him scattered all along the road some morning. So that's what they think of me, Busby thought. Maybe even the children are ashamed of me. Tears misted Busby's windshield eyes and he drooped his fenders in despair. But only for a moment, Busby had lots of spirit. Ready for the junkyard, he sizzled. Not me. I know what I'll do. I'll run away. At that moment, the teacher looked out of the schoolhouse window. Good gracious, she exclaimed, wiping her glasses excitedly. What's happening to the old school bus? He's spinning around. Look, look, the children shouted. Busby is running away. It wasn't hard for Busby to get going as he was parked on a little hill. With a terrific spurt, he leaped forward and started rolling down the hill. Joe, the driver, was startled. Maybe I didn't set those brakes, he shouted to the policeman and dashed down the hill after Busby but Joe couldn't catch him. The policeman phoned headquarters. School bus running away. Last seen on hill by schoolhouse. Headed toward highway. Send motor police. Busby flashed down the hill and whirled around a corner on two wheels. With a bingity bang, like a thousand tin cans, he leaped along the highway he sailed past a big bridge and over another curve in the road. I really am flying, Busby chortled. I can see everything in the town from here. Goodbye, goodbye, he waved back, flipping his fenders. That was a terrible mistake. His fenders drooped too much to keep him sailing along. Furiously, the wind butted against him, and suddenly he pitched over a steep bank and turned a couple of somersaults. Round and round like a pinwheel, he spun and finally landed right side up in the middle of a field of feathery golden rod. The fall shook him up dreadfully. Chuggity chug, he groaned. I know I'll never see the children again. Great tears gushed from his windshield eyes, but Busby didn't realize how much the children loved him. He had been their friend for a long, long time. He did not know that the children had rushed home to their parents. Busby ran away. They cried, he's gone. Busby's gone, exclaimed all the fathers and mothers. How will you children ride to school? Finally, someone said, 
Let's go see the chief of police. He must help us find our whole school bus. The chief of police was worried. His red face grew redder and his straight, bushy hair stood up straighter. What more can I do? He pleaded. I've sent out all the motor police. If they can't find Busby, who can? We can, shouted the children, tugging at his coat. Please, please, let us come and help you. So everyone hurried down the long hill and finally they came to the field of feathery goldenrod. At that moment, Busby was groaning in loud distress. The motor police couldn't hear him when they whizzed by, but the children heard him. What is that? They cried, cupping their hands to their ears. It sounds just like Busby. Quickly, they slid down the bank and ran onto the middle of the field and their fathers and mothers and Joe and the chief of police came after them. Here he is. Joyously, they crowded around him. Good old Busby, echoed all the mothers. Whatever would we do without him? He is a good old bus, agreed the fathers. Listen, his motor's still running. Hmm, said the chief of police. He's a wonderful old bus. Let's have a town meeting. Let's see if this town will vote to fix Busby up as good as new. Everyone came to the town meeting. When the question was asked, shall we make Busby good as new? Everyone shouted, yes, yes, yes. The wrecking car came and towed Busby from the field of feathery goldenrod to a great big garage. Soon, Busby, shining like a marigold in the sun, was a wonderful sight to behold. Today, Busby spins joyfully over the top of the hill when he carries the children to school. Never again, he hums gaily, will I go bingity bangity like a thousand tin cans. A fun production note, the bingity bangity school bus is not incredibly aerodynamic in 40 mile per hour winds.